Let's output some things in the console. Let's see how to do that. Alright, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more and let's continue with the Java introduction here. And what we're going to do today is we're going to make something output into the console. Now, this is sort of a momentous occasion for maybe a few of you who have not programmed before. Now, this is genuinely not meant to be condescending. Uh, outputting your first uh, hello world to the console is a step that every programmer goes through ever and has any every programmer has gone through this so what we're going to do is we're going to type the following we're going to type system now what is very important is that the s is actually written uh, in uppercase here system dot and then out o u t dot print l n and then we start with a open parentheses and then the closing parentheses should in theory generate automatically and then inside of it we're going to write a string but for that we need the quotation marks and once again both quotation marks should in theory generate automatically so you type in one and the second one generates and then we will write in hello world and what we have learned before is that a instruction here has to end with a semicolon we can also see that there's some underlines here so we have to end this with a semicolon and now in theory our program is complete and we can output hello world into the console the way we do this is we go up here to this basically this run e or this run button and we press it and then down here after everything is going through you can see hello world so I want you to take this in. If this actually is your first time you are actually running a program, honestly, this is a fairly crazy good step in the right direction. Every programmer has gone through this. Every programmer has written a Hello World program as their first program. And yes, of course, you can write any string in here and have it print out. So yes, you could write anything. You know, I could write Hello YouTube, right? And I can once again run this and then this will change to Hello YouTube as you can see. So, of course, you can put in anything that you want in here and it will print out. So, with this print line, right, you're printing a new line into this run console, right? This is the console because, of course, we've made a console app. That was the idea of this project. And what is happening, it is basically outputting everything in here. So, what I can do, for example, is I can press Control D to duplicate the line I'm currently on. And then I could say, you know, uh, hello YouTube 2 just for the sake of argument here and if I run this then what you will see is that first it prints out hello YouTube and then it prints out hello YouTube 2 and this is a new line so this print ln means that it already incorporates a line break at the end you can also use pr just print and this will then print this out without adding a line break at the end so what will happen here is it will print out hello YouTube and then directly after the e here it's going to print out hello YouTube 2. So we can look at that as well. And then as you can see, this is exactly what we, you know, expected. This is also a thing that's really useful. Just think about, okay, what do I expect happen here? See what happens. And if it matches, great. And if it doesn't match, try to figure out why it doesn't match. So that's also a great idea of, you know, trying things out. And you can also, of course, do the following. We can make a integer x and initialize it to 10. And then I can say system.out.println. And as you have just seen, you know, I didn't type everything out. So how do I do this? Well, if I start typing, you can see that it generates some suggestions for me. And when the correct suggestion is at the top, I can press the tab key and simply autocomplete what has been suggested. So I can put this in and you can see out is actually suggested without me having even having typed the O key. I can press this again and then I can press the dot again and then choose print line here and I can put in the X for example and I can print out the value of this variable. So this isn't going to type out X, this is going to type out the value that this variable has. So we're going to run this again and you can see that this has now printed out 10 as you can see. And the great thing is that we can even combine this so to speak. So what I can do is I can copy this. So this is a move I do very often. I select something Control C to copy it and then Control V to paste it in. This is something you're probably going to see a lot of times, you know, through these tutorials. This is just something that sometimes when you have a particular line that you want to copy, that's a very easy Control C and then Control V to paste it in. 
And here, what I can do, for example, is I can say, well, I can put in a string before it, and I can say, you know, outputting some value. And then what I can do is I can just put in a plus between those, and this will sort of just put those next to each other. So in, in the background, what happens is this integer here, this integer value gets converted into a string and then displayed as one string right here. So if I now start this, you can see that we're going to see outputting some value, then the colon, the actual space that I've put in here as well, and then the actual value of x. So that's uh, outputting something. And while this isn't the you know craziest thing just yet, we have actually started a very important process and that is outputting something so you can actually see what is going on. And as we continue with these tutorials, the things that we're outputting are going to be, of course, more complex. And it's going to be, you know, are we outputting this or outputting that, depending on some things that might be happening. So that is very interesting. And as a tiny bit of an addendum here as well, I also want to show you how input works. So this is going to look a little strange for the time being. But once again, I would implore you to just be okay with how this looks, not read too deeply into it and just accept, okay, this is it for the time being, because all of what's going to happen, you know, is going to reveal itself in later tutorials. So what we need to type in is a scanner right here, and it will actually show you scanner and then, then java.util. We're going to press the tab key to autocomplete this. And then at the very top here, you should see this import Java util scanner. If that is the case, everything is going to be fine and we can continue along. We will put in a scanner here and then in equals new scanner, open parentheses, we're going to put in system.in, close parentheses, and then end the line with a semicolon. Now, once again, uh, I don't want you to obsess about how, what, the, what is this? How does this look? This is kind of weird. It's all going to be fine. We will figure out what this means in later tutorials. For now, we just need to know, okay, we need a scanner to somehow read input from the user. And what is also important, we need this import up here. If we don't have this, so this might happen to you. So if this import doesn't work correctly, then the scanner will turn red. Now, if that does happen, you can click on it and it should be underlined and you should see this Java util scanner question mark, alt and enter. This means you can press Alt and Enter, and it will now import this up here. So that's very important. If this happens, you can do that. And what we're going to do then is we're basically just going to ask for example for the type in your username. We're just going to say something like this. And then what we can do is we can basically read the next line from the user. So we're going to say string input is equal to scanner dot next line. And whatever we put into the next line will then be saved into this variable right here. And just so I can show you basically is we're going to say system out print line, your username is, and then we're just going to say plus input. So pretty much exactly doing what we've done here. Just now we're actually taking the input from the user and displaying it back. So that's sort of the idea. Let's just run this and see what happens. And the first thing that you will notice is that the program doesn't stop. So because we have the input here, it's basically waiting for an input, the program is still running. And then I can put in, for example, Kaupenjo, and I can hit enter. And then you can see your username is Kaupenjo now actually gets displayed here. And then we finish the program. Right, and hopefully the input will actually give you a really cool tool in your toolbox that you can also use, well, to basically interact with the PC. But that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would, of course, appreciate it. a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So, yeah.